All right, Dr. Rob, you talk a lot about drilling in many of your videos, including in the thermal necrosis video, you talked about fast drills. Uh, you know, you're, you're done before that water starts spraying. So I know in your course, I've seen a lot of people, you're like, hey, faster, faster, faster. What can you tell people about getting faster at drilling? How do you get faster? First of all, before I answer how you get faster, let me tell you why people are typically slower with their drills when they go guided. And, and, and the reason is, and I, and I actually just came to this epiphany this week because I was doing a case for a periodontist that had done, that's been doing implants for 10 years plus, right? But they're doing their first guided case. And then it dawned on me, when you do freehand and you get your implant to create, you, you get your drill rather, to create the purchase point, you don't give it up. You never come off, if you get on target, it's like the Star Wars, stay on target. Once you get a freehand drill on target, which is the hardest thing to do because the tip of the drill wants to fall off the hard bone, it wants to go to the, to the buckle, it wants to go to the lingual or wherever, you want it to go where you want it to go and it's fighting you. But once you get it to, to, to get a purchase point and it starts to bite just a little bit, you don't give up. At that point you say, stay on target, your foot is on the rheostat and the drill's spinning and you're pushing apically on this target. Well, by doing that, you're ensuring that your drill times are probably going to be, let's say, 10 seconds long, maybe even a little, a little bit longer, because you're, you want to get on, you want to stay on that target, and what you don't want to do is you don't want to come out and in, out and in. When you come out and in, and out and in, what you're effectively doing is you're giving the opportunity for the debris that is caught in the flutes of the drill to get out of the way. When you get the debris that's on the flutes of your drill out of the way, the drill is more effective. Now, you take that person and you give them the opportunity to go guided. In their mind, they don't trust the guide. 20 years of doing freehand and now you're gonna give me a piece of plastic that's gonna be, make it so simple that I don't have to think. Okay, that's, it's, it's, it's hard. It literally is physically hard for someone to give up that control. Because for 20 years, they're like, they're drilling on a human being. They want to get it right. And they've been thinking, when you do those freehand cases, you think really hard. Like, am I on target? You ask your assistant, does it look good from your direction? Does it look good? And you're moving your head around. You say, okay, we're on, we're on target. It looks good. Now you're just saying, put drill in hole. It, it's like so primitive that it hurts. It literally hurts. So you put the drill inside the guide and all you have to do is push it to the to the point where it doesn't go any deeper. So the guide system that we use from BioHorizons has a collar on it that prevents the drill from going too deep. You cannot hit a vital structure. You can't. If the guide is seated properly, when you go in, it only goes to the depth that you that it goes to and it stops well safe of the floor of the nose, the floor of the sinus, the inferior nerve uh, inferior alveolar nerve, all of the vital structures are avoided. So all you have to do is go in, and because you have a guide, you can come out and go in and out, in and out, in and out. And so the first drill, the 2-0 drill, is typically a few seconds longer. So instead of being about a, about a second, a second and a half, it may be maybe sometimes three seconds, okay? Three seconds to go. Versus someone who's been doing it forever, it, it, that first drill might be 10 to 20 seconds because they're staying on target. So you've got to break that memory, you have to say, I'm doing something different here. I'm not doing what I've done for the last however period of time. I'm doing guided, and with guided, I don't have to work so hard. The guide's gonna do the work. The guide's gonna keep the implant on, the drills on target. And all I have to do is go quick. And the reason you go quick is because you don't wanna linger in the hole. When you get your drill all the way to depth, if you leave your drill in there and it's spinning, it's doing nothing to remove any more bone. It can't occupy the same space at the same time. It's a physics thing, right? We've, we remember that in high school, right? Two objects can't occupy the same space at the same time. Um, I think it comes from our atoms in their valence uh, uh, orbits, right? If we remember that. So if they can't occupy the same thing, when the drill is all the way to depth, you've already removed the bone. The bone's gone. Get out of the hole. We have doctors that get in there, and I don't know why, because we train them over and over again. Then once you get to depth, just pull it out and go to the next drill. And they get to depth and they just spin and spin and spin. And you're like, what are you doing? Get out, you're done. 
And we still don't know why that happens because once you're dead to death, we even tell them you're done. And they just linger there and then they kind of look up at you like, what? You know, like, and they're still spitting and it's still spitting. Get out of the hole. All you're doing at that point is potentially making friction on the, on the lateral aspects of the bone. And you don't want to do that. And so get in and get out. It's, it's, it's that silly. Now, the challenge the very first time will, to be, will, will be, if you've listened to this video, is to say to yourself, I've just got to go fast. And to you, five seconds is going to feel like super fast. Okay, like if you've been doing 10, five is going to feel like we've been doing 20, 10 is going to feel fast, but you can go even faster. So when we did our analysis on 77 cases, our average speed was a little over a second. Now, the speed started when the drill started spinning and then we, the clock rather, the clock started when the drill started spinning and the clock ended when the tip of the drill was out of the bone. So just, just for, for understanding here, the drill goes in and out in about a second which means that the drill going in is a half a second and coming out is a half a second. So the actual drill time is literally less than a second. That's how fast you can be. Remember, the first drill, which is typically a 2.0 drill, is gonna take a little bit longer to start the purchase on a healed site because you have to get through that cortical plate first. But after that, if you're doing a, 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 a diameter increasing system where it's not, the length isn't changing, the diameter is changing, then the first drill will take a little longer, but the second drill literally will just drop right in and third and fourth. So that's that's why you, why people have a hard time with the drilling and the speed is because they've just so used to going freehand and taking so long. And how hard are you pushing on that drill? Is this like you're just really bearing down or is it kind of just a light, let the drill pull itself in? It's, it is 100% not light. It is not light. It's not a light, like, let me just put the tip on there and, and just let it spin and, and eventually it's just going to get to length. It's a purposeful, I say a purposeful, deliberate pressure apical, okay? It's not so hard that I start breaking things because on, on, on the high end, you know, I've got some buddies that are dentists that, you know, they're, they're big, strong bodybuilders and stuff, you know, they, they could bend and break a drill and or surgical guide in a heartbeat. It's not that hard. You, you don't have to push that hard. And when you do push, it's very, very important that you push along the axis of the drill. If you put a, a bending moment on the drill, the drill will snap inside the hole, okay? So if the drill snaps inside the hole, I want you to be mad at yourself, okay? Because there's only one reason a drill breaks inside a guide. It's your fault. Doctors, it's your fault. You got, you, you got to own that, okay? Don't be mad at anyone. Just say, I put pressure on it. I've done it myself. I've broken numerous 2.0 drills. I've never broken a 2.5 or bigger. Why? Because bigger diameter implants are stronger than smaller diameter implants, and bigger diameter drills are stronger than smaller diameter drills. So the 2.0 is your, is your one that you're likely going to have a problem with. It's, it's more narrow because it's only two millimeters wide. But I've, I've twisted them. I've gotten them uh, bent and I've had them break. And it's 100% my fault. I own it. And what happens is, is you get in there and you don't have your, your path isn't perfectly straight. And as you're going in, you bend the implant a little bit in the, in the driver, in your, you know, in your motor, and that's at an angle. And if you put an implant that's spinning at an angle, you're actually bending it back and forth. So you get cyclic fatigue really, really quick and it breaks. Makes sense. Go straight, push hard, not too hard. Don't break your drill. That's right. Perfect. Pretty simple. In and out. And speaking of simple. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, the Smile Engineer, out.